Hello, hello, Igor Sociecek, Portal Games, As Board Game Shows, welcome another episode, bla bla bla. Ja to tak nie było drogą, że tak się tam coś tam. Hello, hello, Igor Sociecek, Portal Games, As Board Games Show, we start again. Uh, guys, uh, three is magic number. We, to be honest, we totally forgot that we have this because we printed this like two months ago and we had to ship it to states uh, and we forgot that we have this so the street date for this expansion is 8th of june am i am i right yes 8th of june can you have a street date something like that and um, uh, three is a magic number 8th of june it has a street date and we forgot to give you any information about the expansion any teasing any teasers any information about the Cards. I'm not sure if we posted the rulebook already, I'm not sure. So basically, yes, the expansion is very, very soon, we just forgot about this. It happens because we are working so hard on first match on Scry Hub or Crazy Cards and other, other things that we forgot about this small piece of, piece of content. Uh, 67 cards, yes, 67 cards, cards for Atlanteans, Japanese, Egyptian, Romans, Barbarians? Yeah, Barbarians. And common cards. And solo, solo variant. Actually, I don't remember what's inside the box because I'm working on the other cars and uh, I have a question a few days ago on Twitter about some rules for, for this from a reviewer, I think. And I have no idea because I played this, this pack like one year ago. And that's the process of designing and then production and then sending to the distribution. It's a long process, so I haven't played these cars for a long, long, long time. But once again, 8th of June, street date, I strongly recommend uh, new powers, new abilities, new skills for uh, Imperial Setters. I know that everybody is now talking about 51st State. I'm uh, super happy seeing that everybody is enjoying the game. Uh, most of the reviewers say that they, they will never play Imperial Settlers and it makes me sad. Um, but hopefully when they see this new expansion and in future new faction, they will come back to Imperial Settlers and they will play 51st state and Imperceptors, depending on their, on their mood and uh, their friends and what they expect from the game for this particular evening. Uh, by the way, thank you for all the positive feedback for 51st state. I read the, the reviews, I read the tweets, I look on Instagram when you play the game. It's super, super fun to see the very positive feedback. The fun thing is that many reviewers and many people say that 51st state now is easier to explain than Imperceptors, which is ridiculous because uh, just to remind you, I designed 51st state, it was very hard to explain during the conventions and demo games, so I designed easier version of Imperceptors, and now new edition of 51st state is known as uh, easier to explain than Imperceptors, which is ridiculous in my opinion, but that's how you see this. Mm. Origins is close, uh, very close. We are recording this uh, 1st of June and uh, the Origins is in two weeks, three weeks? Two weeks, two weeks. Uh, at Origins you will meet uh, Ralph. Can you, s there's the guy, he is our artwork guy. This is the guy, now the huge announcement from uh, Art Board Games Show. Uh, you need this to retweet this uh, along because it's a very important announcement. This is the guy who is responsible for the small font on Imperial Cards, uh, cards. So if you have any problem seeing the text on Imperial Setters cards, this is the guy, you can complain to him for the whole four days of Origins Fair, make fun of him, make any jokes you want about small font on cards. This is the guy responsible for, for this. And he's also responsible for the beautiful games we release, Crazy Cards, Imperial Setters, Cry Havoc, all the things he's, uh, he's designing this. So, uh, kudos for him, you, can, you will meet him uh, at Origins in two weeks, and in two weeks we will release Crazy Cards, we are, I think we closed pre-orders, or we are closing pre-orders, I don't know actually what's the status of pre-orders, uh, but basically if you want to pre-order, let's do it very, very fast, because we are closing them very soon, because we need to ship the games to the Origins, and we, know, we have to know how many copies we want to ship, uh, along with the pre-orders, along with the copies you will get at Origins, we will have uh, promo cards, uh, so four additional cards for you. Mm, uh, very interesting stuff uh, for you. This is Orgies, this is Freeze Imagine Number, this is Crazy Cards. As I said last time, Cry Havoc is at manufacturer level. Now we are waiting for the, for the proofs. And uh, as I said last time, the whole company is working on the first Martians all day long. We are playtesting. Yesterday we had two playtests. Yeah. You lose twice in a row? Yes. Um, but I have today a new version of the scenario. Maybe he will be lucky today 
because I made some tweaks during the, um, during the evening. Um, without any further ado, guys, let's go to the questions. Chris Schreiber asks, how many books have you read for First Martians? What has surprised you? Do you think humans are ready for Mars? So Chris Schreiber uh, asked about uh, my research for the games. I, in most of the interviews, I always say that before I start designing game, I make a lot of research. And before I started working on Robinson Crusoe, I read all the books about this, this topic and this is how I work. And he asked about Mars. So uh, I start and I strongly recommend to all designers if they want to go into the team of books for kids. Kids books. They are very easy to, they present the topic in a very easy way, they present the most crucial points of the topic. So in your game, depending on the theme of the game, you need to have all the elements that I presented in the child's books, books because these children's books cover the most important things dedicated to the theme. So for the Stronghold games, for the Stronghold game, I had a book for children about the castles, and now I have a children's book about Mars. So this is the beginning of, of the research. And then you go deeper, uh, Destination Mars, a very interesting book uh, with a lot of essays about the Mars and uh, science. This is the most important book, the most crucial book that I was referring to during the most of the adventure cars and uh, scenarios. In English it is called, let me check the uh, actual, The Case for Mars the plan to settle the red planet and why we must. It was released in uh, 1996 and this is uh, scientific uh, information how we can settle on Mars and uh, this is the encyclopedia for me. This is the, uh, the most reference book as you can see I have uh, a lot of notes at the very moment uh, working this so I strongly recommend uh, if you read this book you will feel very familiar with the most of the adventures and scenarios in the game, in the final game of First Martians, because this game is my most important reference book. If anybody is now thinking about, hey, he should read uh, Martian, uh, yes, I read, the Mar I read the Martian, surprise. And the Wild Martian, a uh, great novel and great movie, of course, this is a reference in terms of um, theme and feeling. I do expect that most of you read the book, and I do expect that most of you saw the movie. And you have some expectations for the for the game first motion, so I hope that you will meet this expectation of the game because uh, I know the novel, I love the novel, and I hope the feeling when you play the game is quite close to the to the book. And uh, the hub is destroying, and you have to fix everything, and you have to change the uh, technology, and you have to figure out what's going on, and, mm, and this is it. And uh, once again, note. Uh, great book, I strongly recommend the mass up close, a huge book, very interesting about the curiosity mission, so about the actually scientific discoveries and what we learn about the mass, uh, great stuff. And uh, of course I read more novels, so uh, this is like scientific stuff, uh, learning uh, chemistry in uh, foreign language, uh, because that's what's happening here. And, um, but of course I read a lot of novels and watched movies, all the movies about the topic and the comic books and all that kind of stuff. So there's a huge research before I start designing and therefore that's why the game is so rich because you, I put all the ideas. And by the way, this is, uh, uh, can we focus on for the moment? Uh, notes, 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 so for, uh, for, from reading the books and ideas for the cars, ideas for the quests, ideas for the missions, all the kind of stuff. So this is how I work. Mm, uh, that was a good answer. Yeah. Long one. Long one. Sorry for that. But I'm excited. You can see that the first mission is my life uh, these months. Um, anyway, thank you for the question. Will you be supporting Gencant again this year? I enjoyed it a lot last year. Uh, Kerde asked me, will you be supporting Gen Gencant again this year? Yes, I will. I strongly uh, believe that uh, with this technology of Periscope and Snapchat and all of kind of stuff, I can share with you some of the things that happened during the GenCon or Origins or other conventions. So yes, every time I go to conventions, I'm going to Snapchat a lot. The example of that was uh, Bruno Faiduti Gathering of Friends when I was putting snapshots every couple of minutes. And yes, I will do periscope of my um, seminars. I'm doing two seminars this year. I'm doing seminar for uh, game designers with my advices how to design games. So I invite you to book the events um, uh, game design seminar. 
And I'm doing also Portal keynotes where I talk about Portal games, what's going on in company, what's fun and what's interesting, uh, what are our plans. So two seminars, both of these seminars will be periscoped uh, live from the Indianapolis, so just tune in and watch me uh, doing the seminars. And once again, I strongly invite you to follow me on Snapchat. I show playtesting first Martians every single day, so it's uh, interesting stuff, I hope, for you. Uh, speaking of Gen Con and speaking of Origins, we are still looking for volunteers. We are still looking for the people who can help us at the booth. So if, if you are in, uh, attending Origins, of, if you are attending Gen Con, and if you can sacrifice one or two or three hours, uh, one or two days, and come to our booth and help Ralph um, at Origins or help me at Gen Con, I would strongly appreciate it. Because we are um, coming to Origins, uh, there's how many of us? Four of us? Four people? Yes. yes four Only four of us, four day long convention, lots of work, lots of demos, crazy cars, 51st states, probably tides of time. So we have a lot of things to do and there's only four people of us. So if you are attending Origins, if you can sacrifice two or three hours, as I said, please come to us, bring him a drink, bring him as a snack, uh, give us a, a break, help us. It will help us a lot. The same for Gen Con. If you are attending Gen Con and if you can come and help us for two or three hours, it will mean a lot for us and it will help us a lot. Send us email at portal at portalgames.pl. Can you show it below here? And, uh, volunteers for Origins, volunteers for Gen Con. Yes, we need your help. We need your help. And if you can sacrifice some of your time, I really strongly appreciate it. Gen Kent, yes, I'm supporting Gen, Kent, Gen Con Kent. Pedro Mendoza asks... What data do you use to evaluate what kinds of games the gaming market is interested in? How do you respond to such information? Do you try to come up with something the market has not seen? Or do you try to produce a game that you know will sell but not be original in other aspects? Pedro Mendoza uh, asked me about uh, how we decide which games we publish and how we decide what market is, market is interesting in. Actually, we are not doing uh, polls, we are not doing some scientific research, we are not doing... Uh, questionnaires on the internet, but as you guys know, I'm super active on uh, forums, I'm super active on Twitter, I'm super active on Instagram, Snapchat, I'm a part of the community, so basically I feel the trends, I feel what's going on, I see what people are uh, putting on Instagram and what are they are playing, I see on Twitter what people are talking about and what they are playing, I'm going to conventions and I'm looking very closely what is popular, what is not popular these days, so, for example, in the first Martians, when I played last year XCOM and I saw the buzz for the game, I saw how interesting the game is, I saw the app integration and how cool it is, and we played uh, here in the company, and then we played it, I played at home, and I saw possibilities of this app integration for the game. That's why we de de decided to go in this direction, and that's why we are doing First Martians, the big adventure game that is integrated with the app and uh, will have a support for the adventures and quests with the app. So seeing what you are playing, seeing what other um, publishers are releasing, seeing uh, opinions, reviews, I'm part of this community, so exactly I know what you are looking for because I'm looking for the same, I'm part of this, of this hobby. So this is how we designed what we want to publish, and for example with Crazy Cards, uh, knowing how popular is T2, knowing how popular is Robo Rally, for us it was no-brainer no that a uh, very popular Robo Rally game, fun, uh, classic, now it is going to be reprinted. And Twitch, so how many of you need to play in the teams? How you like the playing the teams? Or code names, we play in teams, one team against the other team. Team, uh, team atmosphere is very interesting and is very crucial for a great fun. So that's why we design, decided to do a Crazy Counts, because I saw what's uh, interesting in the games on the market already. Ben Nicholson asks, when creating cards for a game, where do you start? Do you try to get the core mechanics of a game mostly done first and then create cards or the other way around? Ben asked, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Benjamin, it's, for me, it's, uh, I stand, uh, I have like five cards, I have like 10 cards and I already play testing. So I'm not uh, working very long on the prototype. Uh, there's a, I, I wrote an article about the 51st state prototype when I had like 12 cards and I started play testing and asking players if they like it. And if they like it, I decide another card, another card, another card. So, no, I'm not spending a uh, lot of weeks or months uh, creating an uh, engine for the game and then starting writing cards. I do opposite. I start with the cards very quickly and then I throw them away and I fix and I adapt. And with the, for example, first Martians yesterday, we played test and we, we were just changing cards during the game. Yes, so it was like 
this card doesn't work, I throw it, I throw it away, I draw a new card and we play, play it. So I'm fixing uh, during the game and I'm not waiting with starting playtesting too long. What's going on here? Why is everybody joining the room right now? Jim Grant asks, can you share what happened to three as a magic number? I had thought it was on the ship and announced on your podcast with the same street date as 51st State. Jim Grant asked me what happened to three is a magic number. As I told, we just forgot, forgot about this. Uh, but yes, we are releasing this. 8th of June, it will be released. Uh, it is in distribution. We just, I just forgot about this uh, small expansion. It's so small, we just lost it. It's uh, in the pipeline. 8th of June, it will be released. Dominic Kanzian asked, have you planned on introducing a campaign mode in First Martian? And the last question, Dominic uh, Kanzian. Have you planned on including a campaign mode in the first mission? Dominic, hello, hello. I'm talking about this game for weeks already. We have, hopefully we plan to have three campaigns in the game. So at, at this very moment we have one campaign uh, ready. I'm working on the second campaign. And we hope to have three campaigns in the book, in the game. And we have we have, we have a couple of single scenarios. So there will be lots of gameplay. You will have a campaign mode, you have a single mode, you have a in other mode, a lot of stuff. Please subscribe to the First Martian uh, newsletter at firstmartians.com and you will get all the information about the development of the game, about the changes in the game, about the, how the game develops in, uh, on, in your inbox uh, every couple of days. So firstmartians.com newsletter, sign up and you will be informed about everything that happens to the game. And speaking clearly, yes, there is a campaign mode, yes, there's a single game mode, there's a lot of variants and a lot of Gameplay. I should finish. I miss you guys. See you at Origins with love. See you at, with me at Gen Con. And if you can help us during these conventions, I strongly, strongly appreciate that. Please contact me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Portal Games, Facebook, everywhere. Bye bye.